This video is intended to introduce the substitution rule as it applies to integrals. Now, as we talk about the substitution rule, I am going to ask you to recall with me the chain rule. The chain rule originally stated was if y is some function of u and u counts as some function of x then the derivative of y with respect to x will be equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x or without the use of a u it was f prime of g of x times g prime of x an example of the chain rule would be the following I would like to differentiate with respect to x the quantity x squared plus 4 raised to the third power. Now one of the ideas was in the chain rule you could refer to the inside function as being u. Now with that in mind we would then be differentiating the expression u cubed, which can be done using the power rule. Now according to the power rule, that would be three times whatever that quantity is squared. And eventually we got to the point where we could do this without actually making the substitution on the u. But then afterward, we would be responsible for taking the derivative of said inside function with respect to x. <clears throat> so this would be the derivative with respect to x of what we were referring to as u just a moment ago. Now simplifying this a bit with algebra lets us know that this is going to be equal to 6x times x squared plus 4 raised to the second power. Now that we have an idea about antiderivatives as well as integrals, there would be a corresponding integral statement. And that corresponding integral statement is that the integral of 6x times x squared plus 4 quantity squared dx is equal to the most general antiderivative of our state. Now the question becomes, given something like this, if we hadn't already gone through all of this other information, how would we be able to put together that the antiderivative of this function would be this function? Well, that's where we're going to introduce the substitution rule. The substitution rule is for integrals what the chain rule is for derivatives. So this corresponds to chain rule for derivatives. So for any derivative that would require the use of the chain rule, the corresponding antiderivative is going to use the substitution rule. Here's a general sketch of the way the substitution rule works. The way that we were able to properly identify that the chain rule would be necessary for a problem is when you see a composition. Now there are some exceptions to this rule, so we'll put a little asterisk next to that and address that later. We'll also pluralize it because we're going to use it a lot. The way that you identify a composition of two functions is by first identifying that you have an inside function as well as an outside function. And just like for the chain rule, one of your big goals was to identify the inside function and make a substitution on it. So identify the inside function and call it another variable. The most common variable that you're going to see in this sort of situation is making use of the variable u. <clears throat> now with that in mind, what I'm going to do is demonstrate this technique by setting up the integral that we had set up just a moment ago. So 6x times x squared plus 4 quantity squared dx. Now the first goal is going to be identification. 
that the substitution rule is going to be the way to go. And the fact that you have something that is the inside to another function, a composition of functions, that would be the indicator. Let u be equal to that inside function, x squared plus 4. Now, if we're going to make this substitution, the goal is I want to turn this integral into an integral that contains only u's. Now, that also is going to require a differential substitution. Now, the way that we create a differential substitution is we actually take a derivative of this du over dx, and this would be equal to 2x. Your differential substitution is created by taking this statement and multiplying both sides by this dx, what we would refer to as a differential. Now that means in order to make a differential substitution, I need to take a 2x times dx from within the integral and replace it with a du. Now it's possible to do so, but only if I were to do some algebraic manipulation. Here are the manipulations that I'm going to do. I'm going to factor this 6 into a 2 times a 3. Then I'm going to gather this factor of 2, this factor of x, and this factor of dx, and put it all together at the end of the integral. What would remain in the beginning part of the integral would be 3 times x squared plus 4 quantity squared. So I haven't actually changed anything, just reordered things. Now according to our substitutions, u is going to be x squared plus 4, which means that this portion inside the parentheses is going to become u. And according to the differential substitution, du will be replacing the 2x dx. After these substitutions are applied, the new integral that we're now looking at is 3 times u squared du. This is asking us to, treating u as our variable, find the antiderivative of 3 times u squared. We can find that using the power rule. The antiderivative of 3 times u squared, treating u as our variable, would be u cubed plus a constant of integration. Once you have evaluated the integral in terms of u, we can substitute back. If the original problem is in terms of x, I'd like my final answer to be in terms of x as well. So with that in mind, u was equal to x squared plus 4 to begin with, and this is how we would anti-differentiate that function.